The DevExtreme suite of components is backed by a powerful and flexible data layer. Several standard options exist, which allow your application to connect to different data sources. Additionally, you can attach custom data stores. For MongoDB databases, there is an open source solution that translates DevExtreme data layer queries and optimizes data flow and performance. In the following demo, I will set up a data service that uses the MongoDB adapter. I'll add a React front-end application, which uses a DevExtreme data grid and communicates with the data service through a custom data store. As a starting point, I have prepared a Docker Compose setup. The configuration file specifies an instance of the standard MongoDB image, and I've added a line to import some sample data from a JSON file when the container starts. As a second service, I've added a node project in the folder read service. The package.json file shows that in addition to basic packages for the Express web server and the MongoDB client, the adapter library DevExtreme query MongoDB is also required. The file index.js contains the entire code for this simple service. Starting at the bottom, you can see code to support the URL tasks, and above that, the function getData. The DevExtreme query MongoDB package supplies the functions getOptions and query, and the basic structure of this service is copied from the wiki pages of the open source project. The functionality of the service can be summarized in one sentence, accept requests for the URL tasks, parse the options delivered with the request, and return the result retrieved by the query function. Now I've added a front-end application project to the Docker configuration. It was created using the DevExtreme React template, but simplified to include just one page which displays a data grid. The grid is already configured with columns and an editing form. but it doesn't have a data source assigned yet. The file customdatastore.js includes code for a very basic data store implementation. It loads from the URL of the MongoDB adapter service. At this point, no logic is included to shape or filter the data. I'll add this later. Placeholder functions are included in the custom store implementation. The load function returns a fetch promise for the data. The key property is configured so that a bound control can identify data rows correctly. To see a first result, I need to make the custom store available to the grid as a data source. I call the useMemo hook in the DataView component to instantiate a data source using the custom store as the underlying implementation. Then I set the property data source on the grid to refer to this new object. I've started the application system now. You can see that the three containers are running. In the browser, the grid displays the sample data correctly. I can use the pager, change the sorting, or set a filter. However, at this point, all data is loaded from the back end in one request. So if the connection was slow or the data much larger, this would result in significant delays on page load and when the user changes the UI setup. The next job is therefore to dynamically adjust the query depending on current control settings. I begin by adding an option to the grid configuration. This enables all remote operations at once. Note that you can also be selective about this if you prefer since the remote operations configuration supports various individual flags. To demonstrate paging as an interactive example at this point, I temporarily add a line to the load result that includes the number of rows retrieved from the server. This is a requirement for paging, and I'll change it again in a moment. In the browser, data is displayed correctly and the pager is active. However, there's a big problem. All pages now show the same data. The reason is that the grid now passes paging parameters to the load function, and it expects to receive page-specific data in return. But I haven't modified the load function yet, so it currently ignores the parameters and returns the same complete set of data every time. You can see in the debugger panel that the entire data set is loaded each time I change pages. In the load function, I construct an object called load options. 
on the basis of the options parameter, which reflects the current user settings. In some simple cases, parameters can be copied directly. However, I use the helper compact, which is already declared above, to make sure that only those options with defined values are included when the service is called. I extend the URL for the fetch call to include the new parameters. I add a value to the return statement and once more use the compact helper for efficiency. With this support for only three options added to the custom store, paging works correctly again. The debugger now shows how the grid retrieves each page of data separately from the backend. Each service call returns only a maximum of 10 rows of data, since that is the configured page size. Now I've added code for all supported options to the load function. Just like the remote operations feature on the grid level, it is possible to handle these features selectively. The MongoDB adapter supports all features, but you may decide that some don't apply to your use cases, or that due to the structure or size of your backend data, it is not advisable to activate complex features like grouping or group summaries. You can view the code in this sample as a boilerplate default setup but I recommend you consider each feature individually when you work on a new application scenario. Once more in the browser, all server queries now work correctly. Some features are not used by the simple grid setup, such as grouping or summaries, but they are supported by the custom store and the service backend. The debugger still shows the queries that are executed each time the UI configuration changes. As long as the MongoDB server can run the resulting queries with sufficient performance, you will see fast response times because the amount of data transferred for each request is small. Of course, we assume that the internet connection is not too slow to deal with the network requests that result from each user interaction, an important detail to keep in mind. Although other access patterns will usually not be any more performant if the user's connection is truly slow or laggy. Note that the connection I've established so far between the data grid and the backend only retrieves data for display in the grid. It is unidirectional. There is no automatic feature that enables write access, and there shouldn't be. It would be an incorrect assumption that the data structures retrieved on the read side are mirrored by those used for write access. This mindset often turned out to be flawed even for apparently simple CRUD patterns, and it is certainly insufficient when dealing with distributed applications and document databases like MongoDB. The write side of an application system is different from the read side. It is asynchronous in both its data models and its execution paths. This basic understanding is encapsulated by the pattern CQRS. Watch out for the second part of this video tutorial where the sample will be extended with separate and independent write side services. And that's it for this video. If you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please comment below. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you get notified whenever we release new content. Thanks for watching, and thank you for choosing DevExpress.